First question is from Logan Tyler V. I'm in the last phase of MAPS aesthetic and I notice my form breaking down in some of the later reps. But I also feel like lowering the weight is not beneficial either. What suggest- suggestions do you have to remedy this? Form over everything. Yeah, lower the mm-hmm. weight. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think this is a good question because I know that I remember. I remember being in this predicament. And I think for many years, uh, I re- like refused to lower the weight. I was so – I wanted to lift totally. more. So you want progression. I want to get more. That I would sacrifice the form a little bit to just be able to keep pushing the same weight, you know, So yeah. or even sort of dr- re- drop reps. Reps. I so w- what you'll see in all the programs is the, and there's a reason why this is like we give ranges six to eight you know or three to five or eight to twelve and the idea like when you're following a rep range is I'm trying to I'm trying to fall like right in the middle of that and the reason why is so it gives me a little bit of a buffer because I know sets three and three and four or two even sometimes is gonna I'm not gonna be as strong as I was on set one or set two so. Hopefully that I can stick with about that weight, so I no longer have to do. If I if I'm if the rep range is six to eight, and I'm gauging like for a seven to eight range, that gives me oh I might have to do seven on set three, and oh on set four I might have to do six or maybe even five, like one rep less. I give myself that kind of play of like my rep range is six to eight. I'll keep the weight as long as I can during that that set those sets. Even if I can just still do five, five's close enough to my six to eight. But if I if the weight's getting so heavy, I got to drop down to three or two. I need, I'm going to reduce my weight. I'm going to totally. tr- I'm going to pull the weight off the bar so I can get closer to the rep range I'm trying to work. Oh, yeah. in. Although it's important to pay attention to how much you're lifting, just to kind of gauge progress and in, in strength and see how well you're doing, you got to always compare it uh, to the right context. So if 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 I'm going much higher reps, I'm going to use much lighter weight. If I'm going to go deeper in my reps, of course I'm going to be using lighter weight. And and weight is largely arbitrary when it comes to getting your body to respond. Again, you want to pay attention to notice trends, but it's okay to go much lighter. This this really became a big deal for me when I started when I stopped working out in gyms and I started working out in my own studio and then my own garage. I noticed when I'd work out and then I noticed this much later, of course in hindsight, when I'd work out in gyms, it was a bigger deal to me to have the big wheel on the bar or it was a bigger deal for me to use a certain amount of weight. So I would sacrifice form so true. for my ego. Mm-hmm. When I started working out in my studio, you know, this is back when I had my personal training studio, middle of the day, you know, I might have one or two trainers training clients, really don't care if they see me lifting X amount of weight or whatever. I started to slowly not give a shit about how much weight was on the bar mm-hmm. and I started to focus on form. Same thing now that I work in the garage. I grab the dumbbells or I use the weight that allows me to perform right. good form with the target number of reps. And that's what's going to give you better results because bad form with heavy weight is not as effective as perfect form with lighter weight. So, this whole, the second part of this question. I feel like lowering the weight is not beneficial either. That is your ego uh, talking because it is beneficial if it makes your form better. I remember when I also pieced together the importance and what a game changer manipulating my tempo was. And when that light bulb Mm -hmm. went off for me too, that's my my thought process would be. And I, I used to teach clients this. If I hand you a weight and, you know, let's say I say we're working 12 to 15 reps and you realize on rep, you know, 12 already that this is still pretty easy. You could probably do 20 reps. Like instead of repping out 20 reps or getting even heavier weight, those last three those last three reps slow your tempo way down. Make it harder. Make it harder. Mm-hmm. You take it you if you're doing a cadence, right, through the first 8 to 10 reps and the, the cadence is about the same, like how fast you're moving the bar up and down, right? And then all of a sudden you realize it's still pretty easy for you as you're getting close to that range you're trying to get in slow it way down Mm -hmm. slow it down to four five six seconds on the eccentric portion of the exercise and watch the benefits you get from that and what's great about that is that because you've slowed that tempo down and you don't have to add weight to that you're increasing the intensity that's the signal the body recognizes it doesn't know that there's 75 or 125 on the bar it it takes the perceived stress that it's getting from the body. You can manipulate that progressively overload that, like the episode we talk about, by manipulating the tempo. Yeah. So just sl- simply slowing down, keeping the lighter weight, and slowing the tempo down for the last two reps is a great way to increase the intensity. Yeah, you know, for me, uh, going through hypertrophy type training, uh, I've always looked at it more as 
practicing those movements uh, to make me better going into, you know, when I change it back up to like the one to five rep range where I'm really doing like full force output to try and like move some heavy weight. Uh, so, you, you know, some people they'll go through that and try to get a nice pump and like that's, you know, their identity is trying to like lift heavy weights within that range. But I mean, that's never been my thing specifically, but I know the benefit of it. So I, I honestly, I'll take my, my time, my sweet time, you know, like uh, lower the weight substantially. So that way I'm paying attention to every little compensation that happens along the way. So I'm really just honing and refining and practicing uh, you know, these movements. So I get more effective, more efficient, uh, then going back into my, my favorite rep. Yeah. Range. I mean, I'll give you an example, right? I could do, um, a set of curls with, let's say 45 or 50 pound dumbbells, and I can give myself a good workout. I could give myself a great workout with 20 pound dumbbells. I could do it in the same amount of reps too. I could slow them down, squeeze, concentrate, make the weight feel heavier. This is a very important skill to learn if you want to train long term, if you want long term results and success, you got to learn this because sometimes, many times, it's smarter to go lighter than it is to go heavier. And of course, changing and mixing things up always gets the body to respond better because always pushing weight, weight, weight at some point, you're going to hit a limit. And what's going to end up happening, you hurt yourself. So, this is an important skill to learn.